Hey there, seekers of wisdom. Ever wondered about the mystical rivers of Eden and what they might reveal about God's grand plan? Well, buckle up, because today we're diving deep into the heart of creation to unravel the secrets of the Euphrates and the four rivers that once flowed through paradise. Get ready for a journey that's bound to leave you in awe. Welcome, dear friends, to another enlightening episode of The Word of Life. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey through the sacred passages of Genesis, where we'll uncover the profound mysteries behind the Euphrates and the Four Rivers of Eden. This isn't just a stroll through ancient landscapes. It's a discovery of the threads that weave together the narrative of creation and the intricate tapestry of God's divine plan. In this exploration, we're not merely revisiting historical tales. We're unraveling the timeless truths that connect us to the very essence of our existence. These rivers are not just geographic landmarks. They are conduits of God's wisdom, offering insights into the grand design that shapes our world. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this captivating voyage, deciphering the symbolism, unraveling prophecies, and uncovering the whispers of grace that still echo through the ages. Get ready to be inspired, to ponder the wonders of creation, and to understand how these ancient rivers are not just a relic of the past, but a living testament to the enduring presence of God in our lives. This isn't just a history lesson. It's an invitation to connect with the divine intricacies that continue to unfold in our own stories. So, let's dive deep into the pages of Genesis, where the rivers of Eden flow with wisdom and grace. Now, let's immerse ourselves in the profound significance of each of these divine rivers. Imagine standing on the lush banks of Pishon, a river of untold wealth and opulence. Its meandering journey through lands adorned with gold, fragrant resin and precious stones paints a vivid picture of God's extravagant provision. Pishon is a symbol not only of material abundance, but also a reflection of the boundless richness in God's plan for our lives. As we delve into the opulent banks of Pishon, we're reminded of the biblical account found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 11-12, NIV. The name of the first is the Pishon. It wins through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. Here, the scriptures emphasize the tangible and exquisite treasures that this river carried, showcasing the lavishness of God's provision. This river, flowing through the land of Havilah, becomes a sacred metaphor for the abundance God desires for His people. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, NIV, we are reminded that, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Pishon, with its wealth and opulence, becomes a tangible representation of God's promise to meet not just our needs, but to provide abundantly. As we stand by the banks of Pishon, we're invited to reflect on the richness, not just in material blessings, but in the abundance of God's grace. Psalm chapter 23 verse 1, NIV, echoes this sentiment stating, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Pishon becomes a tangible illustration of the completeness found in God, where every facet of our lives is encompassed in His boundless provision. So, in this reflection on Pishon, we're not merely observing a river, we're witnessing a divine canvas painted with the hues of God's extravagant provision, a provision that extends beyond the material realm and into the very fabric of our existence. Now, let's continue our journey along the celestial currents as we navigate the banks of Gihon, a river that transcends the physical and delves into the spiritual tapestry of God's design. Gihon, much more than a mere geographical feature, is a lifeline coursing through the very heart of creation, connecting the diverse elements, plants, animals, and people with its life-giving waters. In our exploration of Gihon, we're drawn to the profound interconnectedness it symbolizes, it echoes the divine harmony found in God's intricate design, where every aspect of creation is woven together by the threads of His grace. The Bible beautifully captures this interconnection in Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, NIV. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Gihon, as a lifeline, becomes a tangible illustration of Christ's role in holding the entire creation in perfect unity. Picture the vibrant ecosystem thriving alongside Gihon's banks, 
and it resonates with the biblical truth found in Psalm chapter 104, verse 10 to 13, NIV. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. Gihon, as a life-infusing force, mirrors the divine order where every element finds its place in the grand symphony of creation. As we stand by the banks of Gihon, it becomes more than a geographical location. It transforms into a sacred reminder of our interconnectedness with God and each other. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 NIV, we read, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Gihon, weaving through the lands, becomes a living metaphor for the body of Christ, where each part plays a vital role in the seamless functioning of the whole. So, as we reflect on Gihon's journey, let it serve as a profound reminder of our interconnectedness with God's creation, a reminder that every life is intertwined in the divine dance of His grace. As we journey eastward, our exploration brings us to the majestic banks of Tigris, also known as Hidekel, a river that weaves through the pages of history itself. This powerful river, flowing alongside the land of Assyria, stands as a silent witness to the grand tapestry of empires rising and falling and the unfolding drama of human history. In the hushed whispers of Tigris, we find echoes of the rise and fall of civilizations, a narrative intertwined with the enduring presence of God amidst the shifting sands of time. The Bible, in Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 NIV, reminds us that God changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises others. Tigris becomes a living testament to the divine orchestration of history, where God's sovereignty reigns supreme. Imagine standing on the banks of Tigris, and it's as if you're flipping through the annals of history itself. This mighty river courses through the heart of Assyria, a region steeped in biblical significance. In Isaiah chapter 37 verse 36, NIV, we witness God's intervention on behalf of his people. Then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. Tigris, flowing through Assyria, becomes a symbol of God's active involvement in the affairs of nations. Moreover, Tigris serves as a reminder that amidst the grand narratives of empires, God's redemptive story continues to unfold. In Micah chapter 7 verse 18, NIV, we find solace in God's compassion. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. The flow of Tigris becomes a visual metaphor for the river of God's mercy that continues to run through the ages. In our contemplation of Tigris, let it not merely be a geographical marker, but a conduit of profound reflection on God's sovereign hand, shaping the course of history. It stands as a testament to his enduring presence amidst the rise and fall of earthly powers, inviting us to trust in his eternal plan unfolding through the pages of time. And now, our celestial journey leads us to the legendary Euphrates, a river steeped in history, a river that echoes through the sacred pages of the Bible more than 50 times. As we stand on its mighty banks, we are not just witnessing a geographical wonder, but a cornerstone in understanding God's intricate plan for humanity. Picture the grandeur of the Euphrates, a river broad and influential, shaping civilizations with its meandering waters. This mighty river becomes not just a geographical entity, but a symbol of life itself, as water, the essential element for life, flows through its currents. The Bible, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 14, KJV, introduces us to the Euphrates as it says, And the name of the third river is Hiddekel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Here. Euphrates is woven into the very fabric of the biblical narrative, signifying its pivotal role in God's unfolding plan. Euphrates, as a historical landmark, has been witness to the rise and fall of empires, the ebb and flow of cultures, and the turning points in human history. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 12, NIV, a prophetic revelation unfolds. 
the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Here, the Euphrates is not merely a river, but a part of a divine narrative, setting the stage for significant events in the culmination of God's plan. Moreover, the Euphrates, flowing through the Fertile Crescent, symbolizes God's provision in sustaining life. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7, NIV, God promises, Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. Here, the river becomes a geographical marker of the abundant land promised by God. In our contemplation of the Euphrates, let its waters not just be a physical presence, but a spiritual journey, a journey through the corridors of God's divine plan. It stands as a witness to history, a participant in prophecy, and a reminder of God's provision and sovereignty over the affairs of humanity. Now let's dive into the aftermath of Adam and Eve's departure from the paradise of Eden. Here's the remarkable part. The rivers, these lifelines that once cradled the garden in their embrace, don't dry up or vanish into oblivion. No. Instead, they persistently continue to flow, becoming an enduring metaphor for God's unyielding grace, undeterred by the challenges of the world. In the face of expulsion from Eden, the rivers emerge as more than geographical entities. They transform into a profound symbol, a metaphorical river that mirrors the ceaseless flow of God's grace. Imagine standing on the banks of these ancient rivers, feeling the cool, life-giving waters brush against your skin. It's not just a physical experience, but a spiritual journey, a reminder that God's grace, like these rivers, remains constant, unbroken, and ever-flowing. The Bible, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, NIV, sets the stage for this post-Eden era, stating, a river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. Even after the expulsion, the river's journey doesn't cease. It becomes a testament to God's continuous provision, a visual representation of the unwavering lifeline extended to humanity despite the challenges they now face. Now, let's reflect on Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, Enive. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. In this imagery, the rivers become a reflection of God's sustaining grace, ensuring that, just like the flourishing tree, humanity prospers, bears fruit, and remains rooted in the life source of divine providence. As we continue our exploration, let's not just focus on the ancient rivers, but shift our gaze to the eternal streams of grace flowing from the heart of God. These streams are not confined to the geography of Eden, but traverse through the ages, reaching us in every twist and turn of life's journey. The rivers from Eden become a gateway, inviting us to partake in the unending flow of God's grace, a grace that sustains, uplifts, and offers hope in every season of life. And there you have it, friends, the Euphrates and the four rivers in Eden, a testament to the interconnectedness of God's creation and his everlasting grace. If you're hungry for more divine insights, why not check out our next video where we explore the wonders of biblical prophecy? Click right here and let the journey continue. Until next time, stay curious, stay blessed, and keep seeking the word of life.